Hello again, YouTube. And I'm back with uh, just another video for folks that may be wondering what my system, my overall solar system looks like and haven't really followed my videos and my channel um, and, you know, haven't seen my progression. Um, essentially, I'll just kind of give, a, you know, folks a brief overview of what my system looks like. Um, it begins with the uh, eight Renogy 250 panels that are on the roof. And each one of those panels, uh, again, it's, it's 250 watts. They're all they're tied together, all of them, all eight in series. And also, I have these three panels right here on the pole mount. Um, I kind of modified that pole mount to, you know, to add another panel. But uh, the first two panels is two 200 watt panels, and the last that panel up at the very top is a Renogy 250. They're also tied together in series. And I have another panel over there that is a Renogy 250 as well, and it's connected in series with these three. Um, now, looking at the back here, you can see where you know they're all, uh, you know, they're all tied together. Uh, it just everything's linked together in series, and that generates a lot of voltage. Uh, on a good day, I could see you know well up to 400 volts, and everything is tied together as you can see here uh, with these wires coming down from the roof. And this right here is like a, this is basically a junction box. And it's not a combiner box, but just a junction box where everything is tied together in series in this box. And then the two, uh, uh, two wires coming from, from here, the positive and negative, is coming up through here and then up in, in, into my attic. Uh, this is a Siemens uh, DC disconnect that supports up to 30 amps and 600 volts DC. And it's pretty big. Um, and uh, and uh, just for uh, uh, you know Philip Philip's benefit, I actually covered up the uh, AC disconnect thing right there. So it's a solar PV disconnect. So um, that would as opposed to me having to buy another sign. So um, everything is together, and you can see up there it's, it's also tied into a little box up there, and everything is protected. The system is grounded. Um, I have a ground rod right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. That's a ground rod, and that right there is a junction block, uh, uh, you know, for the uh, uh, basically the ground term, uh, grounding termination there. And uh, right on the side of the panels, uh, you can see right there. That's my uh, ground wire, uh, right next to the uh, dish uh, satellite dish. And then everything is tied together on the inside. Uh, kind of you know talk about the uh, the actual system itself now and many of you've already already have seen my setup and you know all everything comes in from right there and it's tied together inside of this charge controller uh, a 600 volt charge controller from Morningstar and you know on the outs on that uh, once it gets uh, terminated on in there then it gets converted uh, or stepped down if you would with to these wires right here and they run uh, to my positive and negative bus bars and and charges up my primary battery and this again this is a this is a nickel iron battery that's made up of 19 cells and uh, let's see here I also have a, a secondary battery bank with these uh, AGM batteries they're about five years old maybe around maybe you know just over and uh, they stay constantly in float mode and so to keep them from sulfating, uh, they're, they're constantly being charged with this particular smart battery combiner uh, that is, that, you know, essentially you look, takes power from the main battery bank and char oh, up to like uh, 25 amps, I believe. And then it charges this secondary battery bank. This particular switch allows me to switch between the two and I have uh, some circuit breakers, uh, you know, to protect my system here. Um, for my main battery bank, I have a 200, uh, 200 amp circuit breaker. For the secondary battery bank, I have a 50, 150 amp circuit breaker. And for my capacitor bank, I have a 150 amp circuit breaker. Now, this right here is a, a basically a, big, a very huge capacitor bank where I have uh, 12 uh, ultra capacitors, 3,000 farad each uh, at 2.7 volt. They're all tied together in series. Uh, for a total of 32.4 volts capability and um, and this right here is to take care of some of the heavy loads like washing machines dishwashers 
blenders and stuff like that, I can run them all at the same time. Um, this will give me the power density um, that I need. Not, the, not necessarily the energy storage density, but the power density that I need. And so, and I have two meters that I utilize to uh, measure battery voltage. Uh, primary, uh, let me say, I use this as a primary meter, my trimetric. This is to, this is to control my magma sign inverter. This is an MS, uh, 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 MS 4024PA, PAE series uh, uh, inverter charter from Magnum. Uh, here is the input that I have for, that comes in from the utility that, you know, that, that can charge the batteries. And that's the output side. So there are two 30 amp circuit breakers. Um, I can flip this switch. If I, if I ever flip this switch, the inverter will go into inverting mode because it'll say, hey, it, because it will sense that it lost grid or grid power. And this right here is the out on the output side. Same thing, you know, 30 amp breaker, single pole, uh, double throw breaker. And, uh, you know, I could, you know, essentially flip that switch so I won't uh, send power to the house. And a cheap uh, eBay meter that tells me how much power is going through my inverter, whether it's coming from utility or batteries, to feed my house. Um, that's a fan that's being that's drawing air from the in from the outside in uh, to you know uh, for air circulation. At the top here is a um, a crawl space fan that I run 24/7. And this fan sucks air out of this room and into the attic. So fresh air comes in from the outside, it's sucked out, so I have circulation. Not only does it suck out, um, you know, uh, charging, battery charging vapors like, you know, hydrogen or whatever, um, but it also sucks out the heat in this room as well. I also have an additional fan at the, at, on the floor because uh, the air is generally cooler on the floor, uh, the lower you get to the floor. And so that cool air is being pushed up or sucked up, uh, you know, uh, from from the from the floor, and then the hot air gets pushed out through the attic. So I have some very good circulation in this room, and not only that, uh, very good ventilation, and it also uh, stays cool. Um, for the most part, that's about it. Um, I'm, you know, as far as my system, the, um, that little thing that what I had when I was doing my AC coupling, I will be removing that soon. Uh, but all in all, that's it. I have uh, right on the side there. I have all of my manuals and I have safety goggles and stuff like that. I have a, a thermometer that gives me some type of uh, temperature uh, reading as to you know what the ambient temperature is in this room. A um, little emergency light, which I doubt I'll ever need. Um, you know, got plenty of uh, safety goggles and again, that, that's the manuals. Uh, my diagram which I need to update uh, that's my old system which I need to take down and remove I, right now I just keep it up there because I don't really have time to update it right now um, and this right here is a little hood uh, you can order something similar to like this from uh, Magnum Energy but I figured you know hey why don't I just make my own so this thing here the purpose of this thing is to keep stuff from falling on uh, on the inside there like vents up here so this keeps stuff from you know like dust or whatever else from falling on the inside of here and also when the hot air comes out it just kind of flows out you know it just kind of flows out uh, hits that and flows uh, toward the front where, where it gets sucked out um, you can see here I've cleaned up my wiring uh, quite a bit actually and um, I mean again there's some other uh, uh, people's systems I mean they look awesome I mean it's all nice and neat and everything but this is not really that wiring right there is, uh, all in all honesty it's it's not bad at all if you were looking if you were standing in front of it like I am now looking at it you would, I'm sure you would say the same thing um, it's not it's not you know too terrible uh, but anyway a lot of this a lot of these wires these are sensor wires and I mean hey they just they are what they are um, this right here is a battery lifesaver. Again, it essentially it keeps your lead acid based batteries, you know, from sulfating. Um, generally speaking, these are AGM on lead. They're still lead acid batteries, and 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 uh, you know, lead acid batteries you're not really supposed to be in be in the same room with nickel iron, except for these right here are AGM and they're sealed batteries, and they generally don't gas unless you overcharge them. Um, but you know, with this thing right here, you know, they're just they're they're in a flooded, uh, I mean, in a um, a floating uh, condition, so it's no big deal. And besides, uh, I'm going to get rid of these uh, pretty.
pretty soon, actually. I'm going to replace them with uh, some, uh, hopefully, with some nickel cadmium batteries where uh, me and a good friend, uh, and a neighbor and good friend, is kind of going to trade. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'll keep you folks up to date as far as, you know, what happens with that. But overall, this is my system. This is it. And, you know, essentially what you have is you have your batteries. Um, you have an inverter. Uh, you got your your wiring, uh, you know, very thick gauge wiring. This right here is four aught uh, welding cable, four, four aught wiring, basically, very thick. And why? Because um, with these nickel iron batteries, I you know I can I can pull a lot of amps uh, from them, you know, and you know I can run just about whatever I want. And so you kind of want to have you know the uh, the size wiring, you know, that you. That's going to facilitate that, you know. You don't want to have to worry about overheating or anything like that. And even though I have a 24 volt system, I mean, these terminals here, they really, you know, they don't get really hot like, you know, some people suspect or suppose, um, you know, when I'm pulling amps and stuff like that. Um, it just, it just doesn't happen. Uh, I mean, I haven't, te I haven't tested it, you know, from a temperature. I don't have a temperature gauge or anything like that, but. I mean, these things, you know, they generally don't get, they don't really get hot. So, but anyway, uh, YouTube, this is my system, uh, really simple, inverter, batteries, you have circuit protection, you know, uh, in the form of circuit breakers, you have, you know, circuit breakers there, you got, you know, heavy duty bus bars, heavy duty wiring, uh, heavy duty switch, uh, protection for your batteries if they're lead acid from sulfation in the form of this battery lifesaver. Uh, you have a really decent charge controller that will allow you to charge your battery. Um, typically, you should have enough solar and, and batteries to charge, I mean solar uh, and a charge controller that can charge your batteries, you know, in, in, on a good sunny day, in a day, okay? Uh, if it takes you longer than a day to charge your battery bank, then you don't have enough solar. Um, you know, I, I am actually, you know, my system, this system is hooked up to 29 uh, watt 2900 watts of solar. I have two panels that I'm not using um, My plan is to use utilize those with another, you know, a smaller charge controller uh, But it's mainly it's not you know, it's just mainly for extra so I won't you know so that it's, they just won't go to waste uh, But anyway, you have a charge controller. This right here is a capacitor bank Again, again this is for you know when I want to use some you know Like I want to run the washing machine and the dishwasher and maybe a blender at the same time and you need amps to do that or you know the battery will will give you the amps you need but it they won't it won't it you know it will not supply it, it fast enough so that you can you know so that it will you know supply the needs of all of those you know motors and stuff like that so if you're running a washing machine a dishwasher and a blender and a refrigerator and a freezer at the same time um yeah it's, it's not going to happen i mean you can do it i suppose some people have or whatever uh, but with this right here, you know, my system doesn't even flinch. So anyway, this is an overview of my system. Uh, if you have any questions, please, you know, feel free to ask. I mean, it, the system has evolved from a small DC coupled system. I migrated to an AC coupled grid tied, micro grid tied system. And then I finally came back to a DC coupled system uh, for convenience and, you know, ease of use. AC couple, I still love the idea. It was great. Uh, the only problem was, you know, when your micro grid tie inverters go bad and they're on the roof, and you know you're getting up in age, and you know that kind of get that that becomes a hassle. So I said, you know, forget that. These nickel uh, iron cells that make up my nickel iron battery, um, I again I use these these batteries pretty much every day uh, when I'm at home and so forth. Uh, I mean every night I use these things. I mean without I don't even sweat it. You know, I turn them on and go to bed and don't even worry about it. It just, they just, they just, they just work. Um, yes, I do. I do water them. I water them uh, more than maybe some people uh, do uh, because I don't like my cells to get, you know, you know, more than a, a quarter of an inch, you know, below this max line. Now, this is the line right here where uh, you know you're in danger of ruining your plates. I mean, from to get from here to here would take you a long time, um, at least a month or two. Uh, if you were, I mean, if you were just running them, you know, hard charging or something like that. But 
I don't really, I don't do that. I just, you know, I it, if it gets about right there, okay, I, then I say, oh, it's time to top it off, and that's what happens. I top it off. But anyway, this is this is a, just an overview of my system. I mean, it works great. Um, you look at my terminals here. This is just a battery temp sensor for the uh, Morning Star Charge controller, and this is a temp temperature sensor for the. Uh, Magnum uh, control uh, remote control unit here. Um, I mean, the system works fine. It works great. Um, just like, but just like anything else, it's it, it's a you know it's a piece of equipment. It's not infallible, and yes, it can things can fail. So you know, I don't put my trust in this thing. Um, I mean, it's great. It provides backup power and stuff like that. But I'm here to tell you, I will never put my trust, my faith and trust in equipment. Uh, because you know these things do fail whenever you think that everything is good to go and your system is just rock solid that's when things go wrong okay that's when your charge controller blows up um, you know your inverter starts acting up or you know your batteries get messed up or something like that that's when you you know and and I mean I will not do that but you know uh, so but anyway YouTube just want to kind of give folks an overview of what my system looks like now and uh, so you know Take care.